Hey guys, I'm your guest back with one more video. So basically, this video is based on you know what is that? It's part three of Indian Constitution lesson, which I was continuing for you guys. So now, and yeah, uh, yeah. So the key features of the Indian Constitution. So guys, I'm gonna give you a small overview of this everything. You know the gist. The thing is that, uh, you know, if, if you remember the 20th century Indian national movement, where we, we all were actually like our ancestors who were of that time, were actually for the, you know, they were struggling for the independence from British rule for several decades. And why did we want a democratic government as that? We know how were we treated in the past. We know the authoritarian rule. We know everything. We know the colonial state. So, we, uh, you know, went on to make a constitution and democracy and we wanted a country of a democracy. So guys, actually, you know, this is not only made by B.R. Ambedkarji, but also made by 300 people in the Constituent Assembly. And uh, it's, it was started in, I think, December 6, 1946. And they met periodically for the next three years till 26 November 1949 to write the Indian Constitution. So next, it's really hard to make a you know constitution in a country like India because we have different cultures, different religions, just we have you know different languages. So you know we like you know making a constitution in favor of all, you know all the religions, all the regions, all the languages is very hard. But our constitution is only consisting of three hundred people along with the great Baba Sahib, Doctor Ambedkarji made this impossible thing to a possible thing and finished the constitution in three years. And you know who is Baba Sahib Ambedkarji, the father of the Indian constitution? So, you know, he helped uh, schedule castes to get, you know, safeguard themselves and the constituents, like, you know, they provided few safeguard rules which could protect them. And also, so, you know, uh, Ambedkar sir, also, you know, he urged the scheduled caste people to join government or as well as the civil services. It might be IAS, IPS, IFS, IES, etc. Yeah. IRS. Yeah. So yeah, next is few key features. Now let's get back to that. Federalism means it refers to existence of more than one level of government. Means like in in, in country like India has three uh, like three levels of governments. A central level, state level, and if this is your Panchayati tire, oh, sorry, Panchayati Raj, which is a third tire of the, you know, government of India. So guys, next will be your parliamentary, parliamentary form of government. And this basically means that the different tires of the government consist of representatives who are elected by the people. Means, you know, this is nothing but the people elect someone and that particular representative of, you know, different tires also are in a part of parliamentary form of government. So our India is a for, you know, parliamentary form of government. So our constitution too guarantees universal adult suffrage, nothing but universal adult franchise. This we are learning from lower grades, isn't it? So, you know, means like anyone can vote, any adult can vote in respective office or her caste, okay, religion, regional language, racist and etc so these people of india have a direct rule you know direct rule in electing their representatives means this is my specs okay i'm just saying an example this is the polling booth and this is one person he can directly vote he can directly go and vote rather than informing the second person independent one like rather than having an indirect role it has a direct role in electing their representatives and every citizen in the country irrespective of his or her social background can contest in elections like he could be you know muslim or he could be a hindu or he could be a buddhism any religion or any okay community people can contest in the elections Separation of powers means that three organs of the government, guys. I obviously, you guys know legislature, executive, judiciary. I wanted to explain you guys in a simple way. Legislature makes laws. Okay, who makes elected representatives? Executive is a small group of people like president, prime minister, council of ministers, which are, you know, responsible for implementing laws. laws. So that legislature making laws, executive implementing laws, judiciary interpreting the laws, okay? Yeah. 
So next thing is that the executive is a small group of people who are responsible for implementing laws and running the gun. I've told you guys. Next, the judiciary refers to the system of courts in this country means it interprets laws now. It interprets it, you know, shows the law to uh, in the people of India, making, implementing and interpreting. So this is done by the three organs of the gun, of the laws, not any other thing. But yeah, and if we do like this, if we have separation of powers, each organ acts as a checkout on the each of the organ. So, you know, there will be a balance power among all these three organs. Next, fundamental rights, also called as coincidence of, you know, Indian constitution. And it helps to fight against the arbitrary and absolute exercise by the power, by the state. So, yes, guys, just, you know, fundamental rights, it says from yourself. It provides you certain rights, you know, you can avail it so in you know so in our country we have certain fundamental rights and we as a citizen of india can easily avail those uh, fundamental rights we have that right simple we have that right to do now we have few rights right to equality all persons are equal before the law right to freedom means now free right to freedom of speech and expression nothing but now i started a youtube channel i'm explaining you guys i'm you know expressing myself I have that freedom to express. So right to freedom. I'm using that freedom over here. And uh, yeah, right against exploitation, the constitution prohibits. Yeah, like, you know, what is it? Prevents child labor symbol. Now, I, now for example, I as a 13 year old may work in a factory. You know? I go to a factory, work. But that's a child labor, you can't work. But you know, children above 14 years can work in factories. So that is, you know, we are violating a right called right against exploitation. Okay, guys. So, yes. So, next is right to freedom of religion. Now, this means that, you know, any, you know, we have, we can choose our religion, we can practice it, or we can profess it, we can change our religion, we can propagate, or we can be without religion, we can be atheist. Okay. So, yeah. And next, cultural and educational rights means low class people or any other religion people or any linguistic people if they want their you know kind of, you know culture to be preserved they can preserve it okay they can preserve it or develop it through you know this youtube okay some yeah means of communication so they have a right to do it that's the cultural and educational right and right to con constitutional remedies is the easiest among what means now what do i do yeah simple now I'm under 13 years old and I'm working in the fa factory and the people of factory should be, they are, you know, they are like, there will be a case filed on them. The reason is that they violated the fundamental rights. So we as a people can go and file the case if anyone is violating the fundamental right. That is right to constitutional remedies. Please remember this guys, these fundamental rights are very important. And secularism, nothing but a secular state that does not officially promote any particular region. So guys, and one more thing, what I wanted to end it, you know, are that our fundamental duties. We, we don't have that much in this chapter, but Indian constitution has 11 fundamental duties. Okay, guys, I'm done with the lesson. I hope you've understood this whole entire lesson. Thank you. Bye. And yeah, what, signing up for guys.